Okay, folks, welcome to Member Stock Book Requests. I was out late last night, pretty much an all-nighter, the first time in quite some time. We're at the New York Trader Expo. Went out to dinner, and we had a great time with a whole bunch of traders and a couple of developer friends in the finance industry. Great time. And I'm a little bit tired, so so just bear with me as I'm a little bit, uh, a little, a little bit slow today. Okay, so this is Member Stock Book Requests. What is that? Well, this is a service that is free to our members. They submit symbols that they want me to review on video. We review the charts. So I'm going to kick it off with FXI. This is the iShares uh, China 25 index. Now, this is an interesting one to be asked, and the reason is is because China lowered rates yesterday, Saturday. What does that mean? It means that we're probably going to see a spike higher in the U.S. dollar. That is not good for stocks here in the States. However, it should be good for the FXI. We have a currency war going on, and the U.S., for the time being, is losing. The U.S. dollar is rallying, while the euro, won the Canadian dollar, Aussie dollar, they are all in decline. So FXI monthly chart. We had a breakout above this resistance level, a continuation move higher last month, very bullish. We may see a knee-jerk reaction, meaning negativity, reflected on the FXI due to the fact that the, the speak on the street is going to be China slowing down. That should be weak for stocks. That is a, that's a bogus argument. Re remember what happened here in the States. We, we lowered interest rates. The stock market took off. So FXI is a buy on any pullback. Volume was fairly low last month. Strong uptrend on stochastics. Strong uptrend on RSI. I think you buy the FXI on any pullback. Next chart up. This is for Henry, IWM, Russell 2000. We are at the upper band of the rising uptrend channel. We are at resistance. I believe that we are going to see weakness this coming week. Friday was a bearish day, the first day down in 11. I went over the IWM on Saturday's market pulse check. That already went out to members. It's also posted on the website. So if you're not a member, you want to check it out. It's posted there, Henry. You may want to see a more elaborate explanation of what my opinion is on the Russell 2000 posted on the website. Note how the, uh, the volume bars are declining week over week, yet we continue to make higher highs. Note resistance. Note the volume declining. There is no rocket fuel vis-a-vis -vis volume to propel us through this res resistance level. So I am not as optimistic as I was this time last week on the IWM. I think we're going to see some selling and possibly a pullback to 117.50. Here's a one-hour chart. RSI in decline, breaking down. And I pointed this out midweek last week. We were making higher highs on a one-hour chart, yet RSI was breaking down. Volume bars into the close on Friday week. All the oscillators, very, very weak on an intraday basis. I expect to see lower lows this coming week. COP, ConocoPhillips, I went over this chart a couple of weeks ago. It was a member stock pick request. At that point in time, we were breaking out of the upper band, or we had broken out of the upper band of the rising uptrend channel, and we had a breakout point failure last week. What is a breakout point failure? This is what I teach my members. We had broken out of this very nice pennant formation on the week of February 9th. We did not see a continuation move higher. We traded sideways, which is fine. We had pulled back, retested what was resistance, acted as support, which is bullish, despite the fact that it was a down week. It was still bullish because we rallied off the lows of the week. No reason to go selling the stock. However, last week, we were unable to hold the support level. It failed a critical test. Right now, Conical Phillips to me, is a short, at least down to $60 per share. And we could quite possibly break down below the lower band of this support level. Watch the U.S. dollar, folks. If the dollar continues higher... You could expect lower highs on COP and the oil sector, as well as the precious metal groups as well. Down volume, it should be noted, declined last week, week over week. No breakout point failure yet on slow stokes, but they are appearing to roll over. 
Very choppy action on Williams percentage R. Ideally, a bullish stock just goes straight right through to the 20 level and consolidates while the stock heads higher. What we're seeing here is choppy action. It's directionless with a bias to the downside. So I would avoid COP and quite possibly short it on a new weekly low. AEY, Advantage Technologies Group, this is one of our top 10 stocks under $10. The story really hasn't changed all that much since the last time I went over it. That was about two, three weeks ago. We are in a couple with handle formation. This is a weekly chart. Couple with handle formation. Note the beautiful bottoming tails back here. This is the market sending you a signal. Very, very bullish. We have already built the right side of the cup. We are now pulling back in an orderly downward slope. Another double bottom setup. A higher low. This is a very, very bullish stock. We closed last week above the 200 period moving average. Volume to the downside, very, very weak, which is good. Watch for a possible rollover here on slow stokes and look for a higher low. That would be a very, very bullish setup. So while I see no reason to go chasing or running into AEY on Monday, especially in light of the fact that I would expect to see a pullback in the small caps and the micro caps. That pullback we may just use as a buying opportunity for AEY. I will send out trade alerts to members. AAOI, daily chart. This is one that I mentioned a couple of weeks ago. We're making higher lows. We were poised for a breakout. We got that breakout. Now what we need to see is a pullback and a setup of a flag formation very similar to what you saw here. Another one of these flag formations sets you up for a great breakout. You do not want to chase this stock, especially in light of the fact that on any given day, it trades roughly 300,000 shares, which isn't a tremendous amount of volume. Recently, though, you've seen institutional accumulation. Very, very bullish. Higher lows on Ultimate Oscillator. Higher lows on Slow Stochastics. Bullish chart. PGN, Paragon Offshore. This is for fellow member Bruce. Okay, so we booked profits around here on Paragon. I know we didn't get out at the high, and the stock has since pulled back. Now what we're doing is we're simply watching. This is all we should be doing with Paragon is simply watching the stock to see whether or not this support level holds. If it does not, it will make fresh all-time lows, and that means that we have no idea where support is going to be because there's no historic support levels below. So we can only sit back, watch the charts, see whether or not we get a bullish key reversal like you saw here, like you saw here, like you saw here. And that is a buy signal. But right now what we're watching is for the stock to hold support on light down volume and hopefully rising up volume. And if it breaks down below, once again, we avoid it. Now, Ultimate Oscillator appears poised to possibly, possibly loop back up, which is bullish. Other than that, no reason to touch the stock right now. Purely a watch. Definitely not a short. MTSN for fellow member Victor. Okay, so on a daily chart, the stock is extended. The market sent us a signal on... Wednesday of last week, by virtue of the fact that it hit the upper band of its rising uptrend channel, flashed a topping tail. On Thursday, you had a confirmation of that topping tail on Wednesday because you saw more sellers move in at that upper band of the rising uptrend channel. The market sent you a signal at this point in time saying, listen, th there are sellers up here that want to book some profits. They have a tremendous profit in the stock and they want to sell some shares this is not the time to buy the stock if anything you would want to look to take some off the table fast forward to friday we are now retesting the lower band of support is this stock a sell i'll put it to you this way were i the holder of these shares from this flag formation breakout i would book half my profits because it's questionable as to whether or not we are going to hold this key support level we did see Rising down volume on Friday, double top in green on the ADX line, and these are bearish indicators. MACD histogram, I really, I really don't care about the signal line. 
so much. I care more about the histogram, and the histogram is clearly in a downtrend. So this late-stage rally here came with the MACD histogram trending downward. Now, if you take a look at a weekly chart, here's the other reason why we do not want to buy this stock right now and why we should be booking profits. This stock has had a beautiful run. It broke out of this flag formation. When we closed above this breakout point here at 3.34, this had screaming buy written all over it. Now it's screaming book some profits because we're in the same situation as we found ourselves back here. RSI well above 70, currently at 83.36 at extreme overbought levels. Last week, we saw a huge topping tail, shadow, wick, whatever you want to call it. It is a sign that there are sellers above. Once again, the market has sent us a signal. We can't complain about algorithms. We can't complain about high-frequency traders when the market sends us these signals. If we allow our profits to slip away, we only have ourselves to blame. If we decide to buy up here, we only have ourselves to blame. We can't blame anybody else but ourselves. So, Take the cues from the market, and that's what I teach my members. Take the cues that the markets send you and book your profits. Move to the sidelines. If you're looking to get long, wait for a nice orderly flag formation, some bottoming tails, build a position, add on a breakout. Note the last time we saw a topping tail like this back here. We had a huge pullback, then flashed a bullish key reversal. It was a buy signal. You saw the same thing back here. So history has proven with MTSN that when you see a topping tail like this, move to the sidelines. So I am short-term bearish, longer term, probably a bull. We'll see how it sets up in the future. REGN for fellow member Chris. Uh, weekly chart, interesting stock. The market has been telling us that we like support here at, let's call it 383. We like the support level. We can buy or open a position on a pullback and a retest of 383.87. But you do not want to open up your entire position. You want to put a stop loss in just under 383.87, keep your losses small, and if the stock, after a successful retest of the support level, decides it wants to rally and then break out above this dotted line here, which represents resistance, well, then you want to add to your position. So it's a measured approach to accumulating a position. No reason to go jumping in with both feet right now. Now what I want to point out, which is a bearish signal for the stock, is that you have RSI making lower highs. You can attribute this, you can attribute some of this weakness to the fact that stock has been in a trading range. It's directionless with the exception of a sideways move. We are trading downward on RSI. I don't put all that much stock in this right now. However, if we break out, yet RSI continues downward, that's a cause of co for concern. Or if we trade in this consolidation range and RSI begins to trade below 50, that's a cause for concern. If we continue to trade in this consolidation range and we see RSI break out in advance of price performance, that is a buy signal. Not of an entire position. However, you can scratch the itch. The market's sending you a signal. We remain in the trading range on ultimate oscillator, no breakdown, no breakout, no reason to sell shares, but certainly no reason to go buying them just yet unless we get a pullback and a retest of support. Downtrend on Williams percentage R, MACD, we may, just may, with quotations around May, may be seeing these slow stochastics attempt to loop back up. Way too early to call that yet. That would be bullish if it occurred. Last stock up for Chris's Garmin GRMN. Uh, this is a um, this is a broken stock. This is not a stock I would want to buy, and in fact, the market's telling me right now that it could quite possibly be a short. First, let's address one bullish observation, and that bullish observation is this: you have RSI, which is looping back up. That's pretty much the only bullish observation I have to make. I think that what you're going to see here is the slow stochastic drop back down again and form a double bottom setup quite similar to what you saw back here, however, on a smaller scale. 
Now, what concerns me the most about Garmin is that it's been attempting to close back above 50 for the past several trading days. This is what I like to call cliffing. It is forming a cliff, and normally what happens when you walk off the edge of the cliff, you drop down. So I would not be a buyer of Garmin because what the market is telling us right now vis-a-vis these topping tails at resistance is that there are sellers above looking to get made whole. They want their money back. People that bought here had their rally, failed to sell when the market sent them a signal back here when it had a bearish key reversal. They simply just want to get their money back and get out of the stock. And you're going to see a lot of that, a lot of overhead supply while the stock attempts to rally back. Now, when is it safe to buy the stock? You could, you could watch for a support level to be, to be defended at, let's call it, 48.59, which marked the lows back here in on February the 23rd, or it could pull all the way back to the October 2nd lows at 48.24. I prefer the latter. Now, when you're taking a look at the weekly chart, you can see a far clearer picture than what a daily chart shows you and this is what I always advocate, is not simply relying upon the daily chart. It's one of the biggest mistakes that new traders make to the market. They're paying attention to five-minute charts because they move a lot. They're, they're paying attention to daily charts, which is fine. However, this is a war. Trading stocks is a war. For every winner, there is a loser. Somebody has to lose for somebody to win. So when you're in a war, you want to take a look at the battlefield from a very high-level view. And when you're attempting to identify where there is a good support level on a stock, you want to identify where has there been historic support in the past. Also, the second question is, where has there been historic resistance? Because in all probability, historic resistance will now act as support. Case in point. Go back to October of 2013. Note how 48.25 was stiff resistance. We attempted three consecutive times or three consecutive weeks to break out above that level. Finally, we failed, put in a lower high, and broke down. Eventually, in February of 14, we rallied through that support level. Now, what was resistance should act as support if Garmin is healthy. This is a test. And last week, it passed the test. This is a new week. I can, I'll bet you a nickel. Shows you how much I gamble. I will, I will bet you a nickel that we're coming back to, at a bare minimum, to retest this support level. Now, when would I be a buyer of Garmin? Two separate occasions. One, on a, re a retest of support and that we hold. Where would I put my stop loss order? Directly below this key support level. If we break down below it and make a new weekly low, intra week low we stop out of the trade because the market is telling us that not only did we make a new weekly low and traded below this key support level now we're breaking down even lower on the week we don't need to wait till, till friday to see whether or not we're going to close down below this key support level the market is sending us a clear and distinct message let's not ignore it let's take our small loss we move on to the next trade the only thing more valuable than your cash is time don't waste time fighting losing battles. Now, when else would I buy the stock? I would buy it on a continuation breakout above, above this resistance level. I highly doubt that's going to happen. I think the probability is low that we do rally and close above this key support level. Can it happen? Sure it can. I would give it 20 30% tops that that's the probability. And the greater probability is, is that we retest this key support level. And my guess is, is that we break down two new lows. Why is that? Well, let's go back to June of 2014. And this is how we leverage his history to help support our trade theory. We made new record highs on Garmin. However, RSI had been trending down. Note the lower highs as we made new highs on Garmin. That's no reason to sell the stock. It's just a warning flag. It's on the track. Be aware of it. Then we broke down, pulled back, and then we rallied back up and into prior 
resistance, actually just shy of it. We put in a lower high, very, very bearish. Then we broke down below this key support level at 4283. That's a continuation breakdown. We then began to find support at $50 per share. We flashed a bullish key reversal, pulled back, attempted to retest and hold key support. It failed. Then we came back to 4944. This key support level where we find ourselves now held back then and we rallied all the way back up to 5966. But what did we do? We didn't break out to a new all-time high. We put in a lower high as confirmed by RSI, which was also putting in lower highs. We pulled back, put in a higher low, bullish, attempted to rally, but again we put in a lower high and we broke down below prior support. So the trend is down. And if we break down below 49.44 confirmation breakdown, it's a short all day long. Volume last week is fairly strong, which is good, above average. Slow stochastics on a weekly basis are breaking down. Lower highs on MACD. I would have to say, Chris, you need to avoid the stock right now. I would watch support here or wait for that 20-30% breakout above and a close above, which is more importantly, a close above $50. Let's take a quick look at the intraday chart. Let's use a one hour. No resistance at 50. Even before I look at price, RSI, my favorite index, clear resistance at the 50 level or neutral level. Good rally. We had a huge sell-off here. We're drifting higher. Note the topping tails. Remember the daily chart, the cliffing action I pointed out. We have clear resistance of 49.85 to $50 per share. The 50 period moving average is acting as a declining ceiling on the stock. The slow stochastics are trending higher. I, I don't see the risk to reward that I need on this stock. A good risk to reward entry point would be for me personally, a pullback and a retest at 48.59. I would use a stop loss order a couple of percentage points below that level and look to get out. Now, suppose we hold 48.59 and we rally, then we stall and we put in a lower high below 49.85, which was the high seen on the 24th. I'm not going to wait for my stop loss to get triggered if I see the stock break down below once again and make new weekly lows, I'm out. The market sent me a signal. It sent me a clear and defined message. Don't wait for your stop loss order to get triggered. The stock wants to go lower. Get out of the way. Look for something else to trade. And that's it, folks. If you have any questions, shoot me an email. Members, stick around. I'm going to begin now on the focus stock analysis. That's where we review the stocks that we are holding. I already went over the stocks that we're looking to possibly trade in the coming week and member stock requests. So I will send out alerts to members on stocks that we open up a position in or close a position in. Again, members, stick around for focus stock analysis. That's going to continue right now. Folks, be well.